We're on problem 17. And it asks us which expression shows the complete factorization of 12x squared minus 147. Let's see, first of all, can we factor out? 147 is a strange looking number. Let's see if we can factor out something. Let's see, it's definitely not divisible by 12, because 12 goes into 144. Let's see, is it divisible by 3? 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. And 12 is divisible by 3, and I don't know if you've seen that before. You just add up the digits, and if the digits, if that is divisible by 3, then the number is divisible by 3. So 147 is divisible by 3. Let's see what it is. 147. I think I have a, well, let's work it out. It's 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 27, it's 49. So we can factor 3 out of this. So then it becomes 3 times, what's 12 divided by 3? 4 x squared minus 147 divided by 3, we just figured out, was 49. And now this, once again, has the property of, it looks, you know, it looks just like a squared minus b squared where a would be 2x and b would be 9, right? So now we can factor that more. And I'll just switch colors arbitrarily. That becomes 3 times a plus b. So that would be 2x plus 7 times a minus b, 2x minus 7. And that is choice d. In choice d, they wrote the 2x minus 7 first, but it's the same difference. So it's choice d. Problem 18. Let me see if I can get problem 18 going. Problem 18. I don't need to, well, maybe I should cut and paste it. Why not? So I copied it, and then let me paste it here. That's the problem. I'll rewrite it, because I don't know if that's big enough for you to see. So it says x plus 3 over x plus 5 plus 6 over x squared plus 3 x minus 10. So when you add fractions, whether you're doing it with algebraic fractions or regular fractions, you have to find a common denominator. And let's see, we have to find the least common multiple of the denominators here. But I have, I have a suspicion that this x plus 5 goes into this. So let's see if I can factor this. What two numbers, when I multiply them, equal minus 10, and when I add them, equal plus 3? Let's see, well, 5. 5 times what is minus 10? It's 5 times minus 2, and 5 plus minus 2 is 3. So that works, x minus 2. right? So this is actually our least common multiple, this expression right here. So let me write it that way. So that is equal to, I'm just going to rewrite this as x plus 5 over x minus 2. Now if x plus 3 over x plus 5, if we were to multiply both of those times x minus 2 to get something on in, in this form, this x plus 3 over x plus 5 is the same thing as x plus 3 times x minus 2 over x plus 5 times x minus 2, right? You could just cancel this out right here, and you'd get back to that, right? And now we're adding that. We're adding this term to this term. 6 over this, well, this is the same thing as this, so that's just plus 6. And now we just get into simplification mode. So x times x is x squared, x times minus 2 is minus 2x, 3 times x is plus 3x, 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. So that's this term right here, got us that. And then we have the plus 6. And then all of that is over this stuff. And I look at the choices, it seems like they have it in this form, so I'll just write it in that form. x squared plus 3x minus 10. And let's see. The minus 6 and the plus 6 cancels out. And we're left with minus 2x plus 3x. So that's x squared minus 2 plus 3 plus x over x squared plus 3x minus 10. And that is choice A. Choice A. Next problem. I'm almost out of space. I'll draw a line here just so you don't get. Distracted. What is a simplified form of? And they write 3a squared b to the third c to the minus 2, all of that over, interesting, a to the minus 1, b squared, c, and all of that is to the third power. 
So let's get in simplification mode. So this bottom part we can re-simplify as, let's see, maybe I wrote too big. 3a squared, b to the third, c to the minus 2. All of that is a to the negative 1, b squared, c to the third power. That's each of these items to the third power. So a to the minus 1 to the third power. You can multiply the exponents. So that becomes a to the minus 3. I just took the negative 1 times the 3. b squared to the third power. That's b to the 2 times 3. That's b to the sixth power. And then finally, c, well, that's just c to the first to the third power. So that's c to the third. And now we can just say, well, this is the same thing. Let me switch colors. This color is getting mundane. This is equal to 3 times a to the 2. We're dividing by my a to the negative third. So it's 2 minus minus 3, right? Let me write that just so you understand what 2 minus minus 3 power. That's where I got the 2, that's where I got the minus 3. And I subtracted because I'm dividing. Times b to the 3 minus 6 times c to the minus 2 minus 3. Right? Once again, I'm only saying if we were multiplying these two, I would add the exponents. But anyway, let's simplify this. This equals 3a2 minus minus, so that's plus 3a to the fifth, b to the minus 3, c to the minus 5. c to the minus 5. And this is the same thing. This is the same thing as 3a to the fifth. b to the minus 3 is the same thing as 1 over b to the third. So over b to the third. And this is the same thing as 1 over c to the fifth. c to the fifth. And that is choice A. Choice A. Next problem. Next problem. Wow, we already finished that page. All right. I can, let me cut and paste what they wrote. And let's see, let me put it at the top of this, right there, and paste it. OK, that's what they're asking, and I'll write it. They 20x to the minus fourth over 27y squared divided by this fraction. So first of all, when you divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the inverse, right? So let's do that. I just, I, I want to get rid of this pesky looking division sign. So let's rewrite this as, 20x to the minus fourth over 27y squared times, instead of dividing by this, let's multiply by the inverse. So what's the inverse? 15y to the minus 5 over 8x to the minus 3. I just flipped it. All right. So let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can, it seems like we could, a lot of these numbers have common factors. Let's see if we divide. 15 by 3 and 27 by 3. So this becomes 5. 27 divided by 3 becomes 9. I mean, and just so you can think, you could view this as one continuous denominator, right? A one continuous fraction. 20x to the minus 4 times, well, now it's 5y to the minus 5th, divided by 9y squared. Because when you multiply fractions, you just multiply the numerator times the numerator, divided by the denominator times the denominator. Anyway, let's just keep simplifying. If you divide the this by 2, or 4, you get 5. If you divide this by 4, you get 2. And let's see, I don't want to do two step, too many steps all at once. You get 5x to the minus fourth times 5y to the minus fifth, all of that over 9y squared times 2x to the minus 3. So let's see, let's get all the numbers out. So that is equal to, see, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 over 9 times 2 is 18, times x, let's do the x, x to the minus 4, right, minus 4 minus, because we're dividing, minus 3, minus minus 3, times y to the minus 5, right, y to the minus 5, minus 2, because we're dividing by that one. And that is equal to 25 over 18, let's see, a minus minus, so that becomes a plus. Minus 4 plus 3, x to the negative 1. And then minus 5 minus 2, y to the minus 7. And this is the same thing. This is the same thing, because this is the same thing as 1 over x to the 1. This is the same thing as 1 over y to the 7. So this is equal to 25 over 
18 x, right? 1 over x, y to the 7th. Right? y to the 7th in the denominator, same thing as y to the minus 7 in the numerator. And anyway, that is choice. Let's see, 25 over 18. That is choice D. Choice D. And I'm out of time. See you in the next video.